We are looking at the idea of reformation, restoration, of revival, restoration of the word of God into the hearts of men, at least preached in churches, and then revival in the hearts of men to get back to doing what God wants. We're looking at this in Jeremiah, and I think it's uh, uh, time to look at the persecution and compassion of Jeremiah. Um, he was, as we are, uh, dealing with a nation in the midst of God's judgment. Uh, I've mentioned this before, but if you look around with the eyes of, of the scripture, you see that there are these overwhelming situations, problems that uh, we're facing. And this is God's judgment. Um, so what are we to do? You know, we just hide away and hope it doesn't hit us in the head and just uh, duck, hide in our basement. No, what we do is to recognize that we are left here to speak of God's judgment, to speak of God's truth. God's enemies heard Jeremiah's message of condemnation and resented it, of course. This was speaking about what they were doing, how they were doing it. His preaching was trying to undo all that they were preaching. Today, they just turn off his Twitter account. You know, the... Our message of condemnation will meet with animosity and resistance, and Jesus warned us of such persecution, Matthew 5, 11, and 12. Blessed are ye, blessed are ye, when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely. The Greek there is lying for my sake. When you are, um, uh, they say this against you for his sake. Rejoice, he said, blessed are you, so rejoice, be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you, among whom was Jeremiah. Let's look then at the progress of Jeremiah's persecution and compassion. And I find this to be an interesting balance. <clears throat> uh, he is persecuted, but he shows compassion. This is where uh, he does not say bad things back. Notice the persecution of word and attitude. This is how it began. Jeremiah 18, 18. Then said they, come, let us devise devices against Jeremiah. For the law shall not perish from the priest, nor counsel from the wise, nor the word from the prophet. Come, let us smite him with the tongue. And let us not give heed to any of his words. They said, he's saying that this land will fall. But God gave the law to us. He's not going to let that fall. And our wise men are still wise and all this kind of stuff. They were convinced. They were okay. And when he heard this, compassion. After this, Jeremiah stood firm and warned the people of the wrath to come. Listen to Jeremiah 19.15. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring upon this city and upon all her towns all the evil that I have pronounced against it, because they have hardened their necks. That stiff neck thing, you know. This is, you're not going to get me to bow. This is... This is uh, prideful stiff-neckedness, hardened their necks that they might not hear my words. They advanced into persecution by stocks. Have you seen the stocks? Wood things, you put your head and hands in there and close it down. It doesn't have to be exactly like that, but uh, something like that is where the locked your arms or your feet or arms and feet together. Jeremiah 20, verses 1 and 2. Now Pashur, the son of Immer the priest, 
who was also a chief governor in the house of the Lord, heard that Jeremiah prophesied these things. Then Pasher smote Jeremiah the prophet and put him in the stocks that were in the high gate of Benjamin, which were by the house of the Lord. He says, you can't get away with that. So struck him, probably smacked him in the face. And compassion, he does not argue back. He does not uh, spit. But he did take it to heart. After this, Jeremiah quit. I didn't sign up for this. He resigned his office. But he couldn't keep it up. He couldn't stay with his quitting. <laughs> so he had to quit his quitting. Listen to it in Jeremiah 27 to 9. O Lord, thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived, or I was enticed. Thou art stronger than I, and hast prevailed. I am in derision daily. I thought being a prophet would mean people would look up at me and say, Oh, a man of God. But no, I'm in derision daily. Everyone mocketh me. For since I spake, I cried out, I cried violence and spoil, because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me and a derision daily. Then he says, Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in mine heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. He said, the truth of God was more important than my feelings. We find then from the stocks, they moved to the persecution of death threats. We're, you know what Christ was saying? That these are indications of some of the things we might face. Listen to Jeremiah 26, 7 to 9. So the priests and the prophets and all the people heard Jeremiah speaking these words in the house of the Lord. Now it came to pass when Jeremiah had made an end of speaking all that the Lord had commanded him to speak unto the people, that the priests and the prophets and all the people took him, saying, Thou shalt surely die. And now they're asking a question. Why hast thou prophesied in the name of the Lord, saying, This house shall be like Shiloh, this city shall be desolate without an inhabitant. And all the people were gathered against Jeremiah in the house of the Lord. The house of the Lord had been become a place so foreign to God that God's man was threatened with death in the house of God. And what happened is the attack of Nebuchadnezzar came. And in compassion, when the attack of Nebuchadnezzar started and death came, Jeremiah warned the people. He was back on the job. He was saying, please listen. Jeremiah 21, 8 to 10. And unto this people thou shalt say, God's telling him what to say. Thus saith the Lord, thus saith Jehovah. Behold, I set before you the way of life and the way of death. He says, be very careful right now. Because as the Babylonians, the Chaldeans have come, how you respond to this. If you cooperate with my chastisement, you'll be okay. If you resist it, you will die. Here's how he said it. He that abideth in this city shall die by the sword and by the famine, because they closed up the city, couldn't get food in, and by the pestilence. Dying people inside spread a pestilence. But he that goeth out and falleth to the Chaldeans that besiege you, he shall live. If you go out and say, I give up, you will live. And his life shall be unto him for a prey. For I have set my face, God says, against this city for evil and not for good, saith the Lord. So uh, centered in the city. You stay in the city, you die. I've set my face against this city for evil, not for good, saith the Lord. It shall be given into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall burn it with fire. 
Well, persecution of imprisonment. Jeremiah 32, 2 and 3. For then the king of Babylon's army besieged Jerusalem, and Jeremiah the prophet was shut up in the court of the prison, which was in the king of Judah's house. You have to understand they didn't have prisons. They didn't have jails. There was no room for that in, in uh, Israel's punishment system. <clears throat> if you cost somebody money, you had to pay it back with at least 20% in addition, if you'd taken something, borrowed it and never got it back, you lost it. If at your hand your, the animal died that you had borrowed, you had to pay for it plus 20% of one-fifth. Um, if you had any of the worst crimes, you were just killed. They had no prisons. So they had to invent prisons for him. This first one, he says, was shut up in the court of the prison, which was in the king of Judah's house. For King Zedekiah, king of Judah, had shut him up, saying, Wherefore dost thou prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will give this city into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall take it. You're, you're talking defeat. We're trying to raise the pep rally. You're saying, Give up, give up. So they just had a place in the king's house where they put him. But his compassion showed while even while imprisoned, God gave the world of promise. Uh, I think that's supposed to be a word. Um, Jeremiah 32, 37, 38. Behold, I will gather them out of all countries. He says, you're going to be taken away, but I will gather you back, whether I have driven them in mine anger and in my fury and in great wrath. And I will bring them again unto this place and will cause them to dwell safely and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. He says, in the trials that you're going to face, you will change. You will recognize all the results of pagan thinking, pagan religions, pagan philosophy of life. And you're going to say, God's way was better. At that point, I'm going to turn you loose and bring you back. But we find it didn't stop there. Persecution of further imprisonment. Jeremiah 37, 15, 16. Wherefore the princes were wroth with Jeremiah and smote him. He gets hit again. And put him in prison in the house of Jonathan the scribe. For they had made that the prison. They say they didn't have prison, so they made that place. When Jeremiah was entered into the dungeon, into into the cabins or cells, and Jeremiah had remained there many days. Now, probably was a safe place with the attack going on outside. But in compassion, Jeremiah told the king God's special message for him that he would be taken to Babylon. Um, the king is letting the princes do this, you see. But... Um, Interesting what's going on here. Everybody else is saying, everything's going to be fine. Everything's, and then Babylon comes and things are not fine. Things are going bad. So the king says, uh, I think Jeremiah was right. Look at verse 17. Then Zedekiah the king sent and took him out. And the king asked him secretly in his house and said, is there any word from the Lord? Jeremiah said, there is. For, said he, thou shalt be delivered into the hand of the king of Babylon. You will not die here. You'll be taken. But it gets worse because we find that he, persecution of being lowered into an empty well. A dry well. It wasn't empty, I guess. Muck at the bottom. Jeremiah 38, 6. Then they took Jeremiah and cast him into the dungeon of Malchiah, the son of Hamalek, that was in the court of the prison. And they let down Jeremiah with cords, and in the dungeon there was no water but mire. So Jeremiah sunk in the mire. The uh, picture seems to be that he's, he's about waist high in this muck. Now, I don't know much about spending a lot of time 
waist deep in muck. But um, I don't think that would be healthy. I, I can't imagine that uh, you, you could abide in that situation for, um, for a long time, for several days anyway, without it being, uh, have a corrupting influence on your body. Compassion, after someone pled for Jeremiah to the king, do you see what he's in, he's in mud up to his waist? It says that they, they had all kinds of people pulling and you know, imagine trying to pull him out of that suction cup of the, of the mud. And uh, anyway, they pled for the, the king released him and then asked about his future. Jeremiah showed him the conditions of his safety. So speaking calmly, uh, compassionately to the king, Jeremiah 38, 20. But Jeremiah said, They shall not deliver thee. Obey, I beseech thee the voice of the Lord, which I speak unto thee. So it shall be well unto thee, and thy soul shall live. So sort of repeating what he had said before, that you're going to have to go willingly. So let me just conclude by saying that these events were recorded for our sake. Uh, this was Jewish history, but it was inspired for us, you see, for us, for all believers of all time. So we are to keep on speaking the truth no matter how it threatens us. While we speak condemnation on sin and rejection of God, we must never lose the concept that our warnings are not mean-spirited threats, but compassionate warnings to flee the wrath to come. So let's be encouraged. Let's be built up. Let's have the stamina to say, whatever comes, I'm going to speak the truth. And no matter how many people say, you're wrong, we're right, the fact is, God is right. Let God be true and every man a liar. And that will true, be proven true.